two animal cells float in their matrix. Although each is separated by membranes, there exists a way in which they can communicate with each other in a very direct manner. Cells, separated individuals, each have their own membrane and their own autonomous system, yet how do they work together? Tissues, for example, they can only exist because cells manage to group with each other. In fact, though they are separated, cells have developed multiple ways of communicating with each other. In neighboring animal cells, there exist what we call gap junctions. These are found in the membranes of the cells and form channels. These channels allow inorganic ions and other small water-soluble molecules to pass directly from one cytoplasm to another between these cells. Plasmodesmatas are channels found in plant cells and are similar to gap junctions. They also allow inorganic ions and other small water-soluble molecules to pass directly along with some organelles. They connect the cytoplasm of these adjacent plant cells. Exosomes are nano-sized membrane vesicles which are believed to contain and transport virus molecules such as mRNAs and proteins depending on the cell type from which they are secreted. Thus, they are also involved in cell-to-cell -cell communication. Hormones are certain chemicals that some cells secrete. These can travel throughout the bloodstream or even locally to induce reactions from other cells. Tunneling nanotubes, or TNTs for short, are long thin plasma membrane extensions which connect two distant animal cells. They allow for cell-cell transfer of plasma membrane components, cytosolic molecules, nucleic acids, and even organelles within the two cells. They are also known as membrane nanotubes and membrane nanotubules. Gondolas, as shown, are suspected to be organelles or other large cytosolic molecules being transferred. There are two currently accepted mechanisms for the formation of tunneling nanotubes. First, these bridges are thought to be established by a directed outgrowth of filopodia-like protrusions towards a neighboring cell. These are most probably driven by actin polymerization. Essentially, one cell will form a bridge towards another cell. Another mechanism described is when cells collide with each other, as in the case of cells in the bloodstream. After colliding, as they depart, Tunneling nanotubes will connect these cells. Note that if multiple cells collide, there is a chance that multiple nanotubes will connect each. Although beneficial, as with all mechanisms, there is a chance that abuses will occur. The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, hijacks TNT-like bridges by allowing HIV proteins to move through the nanotubes, thereby spreading the infection from infected to non-infected T cells. Even worse in cases when multiple bridges form between many T cells when they collide with each other in the bloodstream. This method allows for HIV to not have to undergo the process of producing new viruses as they can directly transfer genetic information between the cells. Prions are misfolded protein particles which can also hijack the functions of TNTs. When these particles enter a healthy cell, it induces properly folded proteins in the cell to transform into the disease-associated prion forms. Prions can be transported from the intestinal entry site to the central nervous system via TNTs formed from the neurons. From this, prions can be transferred between infected and non-infected neurons. Essentially, prions obtained from eating can be transported with ease into the nervous system. In summary, tunneling nanotubes are a method of intercellular communication involving bridges that form between cells. Though these can be abused by pathogens like HIV or prions, they are nonetheless helpful in intercellular communication.